What's up guys, Craze here and welcome back to another amazing day in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now there are more than 50 weapons in this game and while it's true that many of them can be bought from the gunsmiths, there are a lot of rare ones that you can completely miss if you don't know what you're doing. This means that you can completely lose the chance to get some very powerful free weapons and never be able to get them back unless you're lucky enough to have a save point right before that or if you unlock them later on into the story which typically happens quite late into the game for most of the guns that I'm about to show you. That is why in today's video I'm going to show you 6 very easy to miss powerful weapons that you'll need to get your hands on when playing Red Dead Redemption 2. So yeah, let's not waste any more time and get on with the list. Starting things off with a very early on gun, we have the Schofield Revolver and this is like an upgraded version of the default Cattleman Revolver that Arthur has from the very beginning of the game. It actually has better better damage, better accuracy and about the same reload time, also slightly better rate of fire and you can further upgrade this. You can find this in the town of Valentine very early on into the chapter 2 in the hidden room inside the doctor's shop. If you go around the back of the building you can even see the back door being barred and on the side of the building you can even see a small gap in the window where you can see some illegal activities going down behind that. After finding this out you can go inside inside the shop and confront the doctor and you can do so by holding him at gunpoint and then pressing the arrow up button on the d-pad to bring it up. He'll then bring you in the backside of the shop where some O'Driscoll gang members are running some illegal operations and what you need to do here is take them down as fast as possible as they will immediately engage with you anyway. After killing like a handful of so of them, grab the money on the table and then pay attention to the locked box on the other side of the table as it contains the Schofield revolver. Inside of this you will be able to find the secret revolver and it is one of the best available in the game. So yeah, make sure to grab it because if you don't do this now you won't be able to enter in the backside, neither open this box anytime soon and you will only be able to do this after unlocking the gun itself at gunsmiths which happens later on into the story. So yeah, it's a pretty good one. It also saves you like 200 bucks or so and that is like quite useful in the beginning of the game. Nonetheless, the revolver is a very good one to have and if you get a double holster you can pretty much dual wield from the beginning of the game without wasting any more money. Coming up at number 2 we have a similar situation and this is the Lancaster Repeater and it's the highest damage dealing repeater in the game, also arguably the best until chapter 6 which is like right at the end of the game. While you could waste money and buy this one by unlocking it at the gunsmith, the best way to get it is yet another secret location behind a store and this time around it's in the town of Rhodes. It appears that the town's gunsmith has kidnapped some poor fellow which you can find about upon going on the side of the shop and you can talk with a person behind some bars locked inside a room and once you find about this you can go inside and force the gunsmith to open the secret back door which leads into his underground secret room. Here you will find the captured person you saw earlier and you can proceed to shoot off the chains in order to free him. After a sad story said by the gunsmith he will pretty much break down and tell you you can take everything you want as he has nothing else to lose. Luckily enough, right behind you there should be a weapon box containing this very awesome Lancaster repeater. It's very well kept and without needing any cleaning. And it's arguably the best you'll get until much later on into the game and even then it trades blows with the Lich Field. It's just that the Lich Field lacks in damage but compensates in a slightly better fire rate, accuracy and reload speed compared to the Lancaster. Also the Lichfield repeater can only be unlocked after chapter 6 so it's like kinda late into the game and until then you'll need something good and this is definitely going to satisfy your needs. It has the highest damage for a repeater, it has a decent rate of fire, very good accuracy as well as range and the reload speed is also in like the upper high end as well so a pretty good one and it's like almost going into rifle territory if you also upgrade it. 
Another very good weapon you can get early on as well it is that you need to go on the other side of the map, it's the semi-auto shotgun. This is probably the best shotgun in the game right now, having both high damage as well as a high rate of fire and accuracy. You get this in a location very close to the Wallace Station, west of Valentine, in a cabin you find at the end of some small forest. Inside of this cabin there's a lady sitting on a chair and you can completely ignore her and go in the back room where you find a bunch of stairs going down into a cellar. I mean she even points you towards going there and you should be able to find a big box containing the semi-auto shotgun. It will need cleaning after you get it as it hasn't been used for a very long time but once you do that it's pretty much good to go. It also has a huge amount of damage, it only has one barrel but because of that it also has a high accuracy, also a decent range of fire for this type of weapon and I will also add that the lady will notice you stealing it and she will go ahead and like notify her sons or whatever and if you come a few days later you will even be able to like find them over there and most probably they will engage with you so yeah if you want to go there make sure to be prepared or at least find an excuse for why you stole the weapon from the poor lady. Nonetheless this is a very good shotgun that I used up until the very end of the game and this would otherwise cost you at least a couple of hundred bucks to buy it and you will need to unlock it like after chapter 4 which is also like pretty late so yeah if you want like a fast shotgun very early into the game you can also take this one but moving on to another great shotgun you can find in the wild without being conditioned by any quest we have the rare shotgun it's literally called that and compared to the semi-auto shotgun this one has less accuracy but otherwise it pretty much has the same stats in terms of raw damage Having two barrels instead of one does make it blast everything that stands in front of it at close range but the damage fall off and spread makes it kind of bad from a little bit further off. But yeah that is kind of expected with shotguns anyway and otherwise this is an excellent pick. To acquire this all you need to do is head over to the Hermit Shack which is located right outside of Ansberg to the north and yeah there is going to be a cabin in there with a guy wielding this weapon and once you like enter his property prepare to get shot at because he doesn't like visitors. He even shouts at you to not get close and will engage with you soon after trespassing but fortunately enough if you're on your toes you can easily take him down and after successfully doing so you can go ahead and approach his corpse, proceed to take the rare shotgun from his dead cold hands by pressing L1 but do keep in mind that this will exchange it with whatever you already have equipped. So either leave a free slot on your back and on your shoulders when approaching this encounter or have a weapon that you don't really want and you want to exchange it or throw it away. I haven't tested it out if this can be upgraded at a gunsmith though I would assume it can but what I did test out is its damage and capabilities and its definitely Definitely one of the strongest one, it's very powerful, it blasts people in front of it with its two barrels and if you put bug shots in it, it's even more damaging, I mean you're destroying everything in front of your path, very good weapon nonetheless. If you're still in this region you might also want to head over exactly to the west side of this cabin on the other side of the Kamasa River and check out the Roanoke Valley. There you'll find a stone altar with a skeleton on it and you can even inspect it and add it to the journal. But what you want here is what's right next to it and there's going to be a viking hatchet lodged into a skull on a small pedestal. You can take it in your inventory by pressing the square button and it's going to be yours from now on. It is a throwable weapon and there's only one of it which pretty much means that you won't be able to use it regularly and what you'll want to do is constantly retrieve it from wherever or whoever you threw it at. In terms of damage it has a maximum bonus here, significantly better than most other throwables and it pretty much kills everything in its path. Finally the last weapon on today's list is none other than Otis Miller's Golden Revolver. You can potentially grab this one quite early into the game even with New Austin being marked as wanted dead or alive to you but this might pose a lot of trouble to you, you might get spotted by lawmen and immediately getting shot at so you might want to wait until chapter 6.
sticks when like water is clear out. Still, whenever you decide to retrieve it, it's inside a cave exactly in the middle upper section of the map of New Austin between Tumbleweed and Armadillo. The cave itself is small so you don't need to venture forth too much and it will be right inside a big box among other things. Make sure to take everything inside that box including the nudie photos in there and finally also take the revolver using the L1 button on your controller. Be careful though, just like the previous shotguns, this one also exchanges with whatever you wield in your hands, so better throw a useless one to exchange it or simply make room for it before moving to the cave. The revolver itself comes fully upgraded and it's one of the most powerful in the game. Outside of being completely gold plated and beautifully carved, it also has a high damage, of course second to the volcanic pistol which still takes the top spot in terms of single shot damage, but otherwise it has a high rate of fire, accuracy and reload speed and it's like a glorified Cattleman or Schofield revolver, not sure which one of them is, but it's definitely good looking and you can't even upgrade it anymore because it's pretty much at maximum and I did test it out by completely massacring everybody in Tumbleweed and it served me just right. I think I've played for like 30 minutes or so, even more, never got close to being dead and I was able to take everybody on and of course you can see that from the stats as well because the stats are also good. And yeah, these are just some of the weapons you can find in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. There are many more in there, especially melee and throwables, but in terms of actual guns, these are most of them, if not all of them, and these do not require any special quests to acquire, neither are they locked behind story content. Now if you guys enjoyed this video, then as always, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Also comment down below below what your favorite weapon in Red Dead Redemption 2 is and I will see you guys in the next one so peace out.